This lecture deals with CLR parser that is canonical LR parser. So construction of CLR parser is based on collection of LR1 items. So if you consider simple LR parser, construction of simple LR parser is based on LR0 items. So if you consider the LR0 item, the general form is A giving alpha dot beta. So this is LR, the general format of an LR0 item. So assume that you are having an item set IA contain an item A giving alpha dot. So if IA is having an item A giving alpha dot, then state I will call for reduction by applying the production A giving alpha alpha for the input symbol A that belongs to follow of A. So what happens is after replacing this alpha in the stack top uh, let this be the stack status so you are having beta here state i minus 1 followed by alpha followed by i so whenever i is on the top of stack and since i is having an item of this form state i will call for reduction by applying the production for the input symbol a so what happens is this get popped and a get pushed into stack and it will execute go to i minus 1 a so whatever the state at this point the viable prefix beta a is there in the stack top viable prefix is beta a and this terminal symbol a need not be the terminal symbol need not be the terminal symbol that follows beta a in the right sentential form so a need not be the next terminal symbol in the right sentential form that is an issue faced by slr parser so this happens because of the reason that because of some limitation of this item this item is not holding any additional information regarding the lookahead symbol so what happens is lr1 item is that each item will be of the form alpha dot beta comma some symbols of length exactly one each so this a could be a terminal symbol or it could be the delimiting symbol dollar so if item set i i in our CLR parser contains an item of the form a giving alpha dot comma look ahead symbol a so this symbol is termed as look ahead symbol then in this situation state i will call for reduction by applying the production a giving alpha only if the input encountered is the look ahead symbol a so in this way by providing lookhead symbols of length 1 each this CLR parser will resolve the issue faced by SLR parser so that is the reason for calling the set of items in CLR parser as LR1 item associated to each item there will be some set of lookhead symbols of length exactly 1 each so let me illustrate the construction of CLR parsing table using a simple example. Consider the grammar with production S giving CC, C giving CC or D. Let this be the grammar G. So the first step is you have to construct the augmented grammar G dash. That is same as that of uh, that, that in SLR parser. So augmented grammar, in order to construct the augmented grammar, you have to introduce a new start symbol and add the production S dash giving S. Yes. Next production will be S giving CC. Next production will be C giving CC 
or D. So in order to proceed you need to uh, determine first of the variables. First of the variables used in G. So what about first of S. First of S C is first of C. First of C is C and D. So it will be C and D. Similarly first of C is if you consider C the first terminals include C and D. So first you have to start with the starting production in the augmented grammar. You are trying to construct the initial item set that is I0. So in order to construct the initial item set you have to add the starting production that is S dash giving dot S. So in this case what about the look ahead symbol of this item. So you know that whenever parser sees this or applies this particular production you know that after this yes whenever parser complete parsing the simple yes the expected lookahead symbol is dollar so dollar is the lookahead symbol associated to this particular item so this is the initial item that can be added to the item set item set i0 now you have to take the closure so if you consider this item set you are having a right hand side containing dot followed by a variable s yes. so you have to add productions corresponding to s yes. so you are having s yes giving so if you consider production corresponding to s yes, you are having s yes giving cc so what about its lookahead symbol so i will generalize or formalize it to formalize uh, to compute or determine the lookahead symbol. Assume that you are having a production A giving alpha dot B beta with a lookahead symbol A. You are trying to take the closure of this item. While taking closure, assume that uh, B giving gamma B a production in your grammar G. So while taking the closure the item will be first part of item will be b giving dot gamma now what about the second part second part is actually look ahead item look ahead item will be first of the string beta a that is b is the variable under consideration from where we have added this particular item so look ahead of this item will be first of the string obtained by concatenating remaining part of this right hand side and the look ahead item so if you are having multiple look ahead items like this you have to take first of beta a and first of beta b so in this way you can add the look ahead item so in this case we, we have added this particular item based on this variable s yes. and that is followed by epsilon now what about this look ahead item this look ahead item is obtained by concatenating by taking first of the string obtained by concatenating the remaining string that is epsilon concatenated with dollar so what about first of epsilon concatenated with dollar that is dollar itself now if you consider this item, you are having dot immediately followed by C. So you are expected to extend the closure set. So add productions corresponding to C. So C giving dot CC and C giving dot D. So these are the items to be added. What about the second part, look ahead part? If you consider these two items these two items are added only because of the presence of dot c here so remaining part is c now look at part of this will be first of c dollar what is first of c dollar first of c is c and d so what about first of c dollar and first of d dollar first of c dollar is c and first of d dollar is d so here it will be c or d Similarly, here also 
the Lukert symbol will be C or D. Now, uh, there is no possibility to extend this closure because here you are having dot followed by a terminal, here also you are having dot followed by terminal. So this will be the initial item set obtained. Now, you have to construct the or extend the set of uh, extend item sets by constructing the DFA, deterministic model. So here, what are the possible transitions that, that can be added? So how do you determine the or identify the set of transitions that can be added to a particular state? You need to add transition for those grammar symbols that immediately succeeds dot operator. If I consider this particular item set, you are having S yes, that immediately succeeds dot. You are having C that immediately succeeds dot. You are having terminal C that immediately succeeds, succeeds dot. You are having D that immediately succeeds dot. So you will be having four transitions for this particular state. So first you can consider S. Yes. So what happens whenever, when this parser complete parsing S, yes, you will be getting the item S dash giving S dot. And the look ahead symbol will remain same. Now see whether there is any chance for extending the closure or if you take closure of this item set it will remain same. You are not having any item whose right hand side contains dot followed by a variable. So let, let this be the item set I1. Now you can apply C. So if we apply C, so this is the only production that contains right that that's having right hand side containing dot followed by C. So if we extend it, you will be getting S giving C dot C dollar. So this is the initial item. So after adding the initial item, you have to take the closure. So repeatedly take the closure until you cannot add no more items to the item set. So let this be the item set I2. So you are having dot dot followed by C. So you have to take productions corresponding to C. C giving dot C C. What about the look ahead? This C is followed by nothing. So epsilon concatenated with dollar. Take its first. So that will be dollar itself. Similarly, C giving dot D. You are having C followed by epsilon. Epsilon concatenated with dollar. First of dollar is dollar itself. So this will be the new item set obtained. Now what about transition corresponding to C? So you have to take this is the this is the production that introduces this transition. So initial item will be C giving. You have to shift this dot operator one unit to the right. So you'll be getting C dot C and the lookard item will be C or D. You are having two lookard items. Let this item set be I3. So this is the initial item. Now you can take the closure. Since you are having a right hand side that contain dot followed by C, terminal, non-terminal C, you have to add productions corresponding to C. So C giving dot C C. So what about the look ahead items? So if you consider this C, this is the production that leads to addition of this item. So this C is followed by nothing. So epsilon concatenated with this C is one look ahead, first of this one. And the second look ahead will be first of epsilon concatenated with D. So first of epsilon C is C itself, first of epsilon D is D itself. So for this item you are having two look ahead symbols C and D of length one each. Now, since you are adding productions corresponding to C, you have to add C giving dot D. So what about the look ahead item? It is C or D. So this will be the set. Now if you apply transition corresponding to D, you will be getting, so this is the production or the item that leads to this transition. You will be getting C giving D dot. That is you have to shift this dot operator one unit to the right and the look ahead item will remain same. And since right hand side is not having any variable preceded with dot operator the closure of this set 
will remain same. So we will be getting the new item set I4. Now we extend this automated by applying the transitions. So here no scope for adding a transition but if you consider this one you are having a scope for adding transition corresponding to C for this item. So you will be getting S giving CC dot and the lookout symbol is dollar. This is the only item that can be added and this is the item set. So let this be I5. So next next transition corresponds to C because you are having dot followed by terminal C. So what will be the initial item? Shift the dot operator one unit to the right. For that item, you will be getting C giving C dot C and the lookout symbol will be dollar. Since you are having dot followed by a variable, you have to extend it. You have to add the take the closure. So you'll be getting C giving dot CC. So what about the lookout item? Lookout item is presence of this non-terminal leads to addition of this one. So this non-terminal terminal is followed by nothing. So epsilon concurrent with dollar and take its first. So it will remain same dollar. So similarly you can add C giving dot D item. So this is the new item set obtained. Let it be I6. Now what about D? So to this item set if I apply D transition, this is the only item that leads to D transition we will be getting the item C giving D dot with dollar as the lookout symbol. So let this be I7. Now you can add transition to this state I, I3, item set I3. So the first one is C transition that is uh, non-terminal C this is the production so you will be getting C giving C C dot and the lookout symbols will be C or D and if you take closure the set will remain same because you are not having this is the initial item add to this set and you are not having any variable that follows dot so here this is the item item set let be I8 now what happens if I apply C transition? We have to apply C transition to this item set because, because you are having dot followed by this terminal C. So what happens is you will be getting C giving C dot C with lookout CD. Since you are having non-terminal C that immediately follows dot operator, you have to add items corresponding to C also. So C giving dot C C and C giving dot D. So what about the lookaheads? Here we are having nothing. Nothing again with C. First of that is C itself. You are having epsilon here. Epsilon again with D. That is D itself. First of D is D itself. So similarly here lookaheads symbol will be C D. And if you take this item, this item is already existing one. That is item set I3. So this C transition will remain as self transition. What happens for D transition? D transition will go to item set I4 because you will be getting the item C giving D dot with C and D as the lookahead. Now if I take item set I5 you cannot apply transition but if I take this one you can apply capital C that is uh, non-terminal C as the transition so you will be getting C giving C C dot with dollar as the lookout symbol and here this is the initial item and it's not possible to if you if you take the closure the item set will remain same so the item set let it be I9 now what happens if we apply 
terminal C. If I apply terminal C, you will be getting C giving C dot C dollar. Since we are having dot followed by capital C, take the closure. So you will be getting C giving dot C C, C giving dot D. What about the lookaheads? Here it is epsilon. So lookahead will be these look, this lookahead. So dollar and dollar. And if you look at item set I6, it remains same as this one. So C transition corresponding to terminal C will remain a self transition. What about D transition? If I take this is the item that leads to addition of D transition, it will give the item D giving D dot and the lookout symbol is dollar. So you are having item corresponding to this item set corresponding to this one. That is I7. So D transition will go to I7. And if I take uh, I7, you cannot add more transition. If I take I9, you cannot add any transition. If I take I8, you cannot add any transition. So this is the uh, deterministic model obtained, de deterministic finite automata obtained for this grammar based on L collection of LR1 items. If I take any item in the item set, that item will be followed by lookaheads of length exactly one each. That is the reason for calling this item set as LR1 item set. Now based on this you can, uh, you can construct the CLR parsing table. So let me label the productions S yes, giving CC. Let this be the first production. Let second production be C giving CC. Let third production be C giving D. As you all know, parsing table will consist of two parts. One is action, and the second part is go to. So, since you are having two non terminals, there will be entry corresponding to those non terminals in go to part. And here we are having C and D as terminal symbols. So, in the action part, there will be column corresponding to C, D, and the delimiting symbol dollar. And here we are having states. So this will be the parsing table and you are having 10 states labeled from 0 onwards. So you are having state 0, state 1, 2, 1 by 1. You can, this item set I0 represents state 0, item set I1 represents state 1 and so on. So if I take item set I0, it represents state 0. So if you consider state 0, you are, you are having transition for non-terminals S, yes, C and terminal symbol C and D. So first you can take non-terminals. So from state 0, for non-terminal S, yes, it goes to state 1. So from state 0, for non-terminal yes, it will go to state 1. Now if I take C, from state 0, for non-terminal C, it goes to state 2. two. Now if I take state 0, for terminal C, it goes to state 3. So as we, as we have discussed in SLR parsing, a terminal transition actually represents a shift to operation. So since you are moving from 0 to 3, the target state is 3, you have to perform shift operation of the next input symbol followed by the state level 3 into stat. So that is represented as S3. S stands for shift operation and 3 stands for the state level. After shifting the current input into stack, you have to shift the state 3 into stack. 
So from 0 for terminal C shift 3. Similarly from state 0 for terminal D shift 4. So here it will be S4. So we have processed I0. Now we can process I1. It's not having any outgoing transition. Now process state 2. It's having outgoing transition for non-terminal C. So from state 2 for C go to 5. Now from state 2 for terminal C shift 6. From state 2 for terminal C shift 6. So this represents terminal C. Now from state 2 for terminal D shift 7. Now you can process state 3. State 3 is having transition for non-terminal C and transition for terminal C and D. So we first take transition for non-terminal C. So from state 3 for non-terminal C go to state 8. From state 3 for non-terminal C go to state 8. From 3 for terminal C go to same state 3. That corresponds to shift operation of 3. For terminal 3 shift 3. From state 3 for terminal D shift 4. Now you can process D. D is not having any outgoing transition. So leave it. You can process 5. No outgoing transition. Leave it. Now state 6. It's having 3 outgoing transition. First you can take a transition corresponding to the variable C. So that goes to 9. So from state 6. From 6. Variable C. Variable C goes to 9. Now. From state 6 for terminal C remain in the same state. So that actually corresponds to shift operation of state 6 into stack. Now from state 6 for terminal D go to state 7. So that actually represents shift operation of state 7 into stack. So you have completed processing uh, state 6. State 7 is not having any outgoing transition, leave it. State 8 is not having any outgoing transition, leave it. State 9 is not having any outgoing transition, leave it. Now, uh, we have completed adding go to part and action part that involves uh, shift operation. Now, we have to update the action part by adding reductions. So, I0, so we have to uh, consider those item sets containing items of the form A giving alpha dot A that is right production containing right hand side terminated with dot operator so if you consider this item set you are not having any production that is terminated with dot so leave I0 if I take I1 you are having an item that is delimited with whose right hand side is delimited with dot operator so here you have to add a reduction in state 1 so you have to add reduction in state 1 corresponding to the lookered symbol dollar. So state for state 1 corresponding to lookered dollar you have to add this reduction. So whenever parser sees this particular or applies this particular reduction s dash giving s it can conclude that string is valid. So it represents this particular Reduction represent acceptance of the string. So it will get accepted. Now you can process state I2. I2 is not having any any production in the item who that is delimited with dot operator. Leave it. For I3 also you are not having any production whose right hand side is delimited with dot operator. So leave it. For I4 you are having a production whose right hand side is delimited with dot operator. So if we consider this particular production C giving D that is the third production so you are expected to create an entry R3 reduce using third production so in state 4 corresponding to look at C and D corresponding to, in state 4 corresponding to look at C and D you 
have to create entry R3 that represents reduction using production number 3. Now you can take state file, item set file. Here also you are having a production is giving CC that is delimited with dollar. So you are expected to add entry corresponding to reduction in this state. So you have to create entry in column corresponding to dollar because dollar is the required symbol here and S giving CC is the first production so entry will be R1 so in state 5 and required symbol corresponding to dollar you have to create entry R1 now we can process state 6 state 6 is not having any right hand side production whose right hand side delimited with dot so leave it state 7 you are having an item whose production right hand side is delimited with dollar and C given D is actually third production so entry must be R3 R3 must be entered into row 7 and column corresponding to look ahead column corresponding to look ahead is dollar so entry will be entry will be R3 now you can process I8 if you consider I8 you are having uh, there is a scope of reduction because you are having right hand side that is delimited with dollar and C giving CC is actually the second production so the entry so entry must be R2 R2 must be entered into row 8 and column corresponding to its look ahead so look ahead is actually C and D so I expected to enter R2 in row 8 and column C and D Similarly, if you consider I9, you are having C giving C, C dot. That represent R2. You have to reduce using production number 2. And entry must be there in the column corresponding to dollar. Because dollar is the look ahead. So, this is the final uh, parsing table obtained from this collection of LR1 items. Now, <clears throat> you can call this parsing table as canonical LR1 parsing table that is C L R 1 parsing table so an LR parser see as we have mentioned in the lecture corresponding to L, introduction to LR parsers if you consider an LR parser there will be a driver program and there will be a parsing table so this is the structure of an LR parser so if the LR parser that uses a CLR1 parsing table is termed as CLR parser so LR parser using CLR1 parsing table is termed as a canonical LR parser and the grammar is termed as so if it is possible in this case if you consider this grammar it is possible to construct a CLR uh, construct a parsing table for CLR1 parsing table successfully successfully in the sense if you consider each location each location is having unique entry as you all know these blank entries are termed as errors and all non-blank entries are actually unique so since it is possible to construct SLR1 parsing table success sorry CLR1 parsing table successfully this grammar is termed as LR1 grammar so if it is possible to construct SLR parsing table then you can call that grammar as SLR1 grammar so if you take any SLR1 grammar, any SLR1 grammar is a CLR, is LR1 grammar for, because 
for any SLR1 grammar, you can construct a CLR1 parsing table successfully. So that is one conclusion. Every SLR1 grammar is LR1. But a LR1 grammar need not be SLR1. So uh, this CLR parser is more powerful as compared to SLR parser. Then if you consider, so this is actually uh, the parsing table corresponding to the canonical LR parser and you know that for this grammar you are having some 10 states. But if you consider the equivalent SLR parsing table, this grammar is basically SLR, SLR1 so you can construct uh, CLR parser also, CLR parsing table also. So if you construct the corresponding SLR parser, you can see that there will be only 7 states in the DFA. If you consider SLR uh, parser corresponding to this grammar, there will be only 7 states. So, while, while capturing additional information, state get splitted and the equivalent SLR parser, I mean CLR parser will be having more number of states as compared to SLR parser. So, that is another conclusion. Number of states in the CLR parser will be more as compared to number of states in the SLR parser. So that's it.